Hello? All right. First of all, I want you guys to make sure that you've been warned in advance. If you go over to UC's uh, seminar right now, he will give you a four-year paid version of Ekahau, and that's with all the software updates and everything. So if you choose to stay here, it's by your own will. So. And uh, the next thing that we actually need to, uh, to make known is I am not Keith Parsons. Um, he was on the schedule for this event. So if anyone's confused, Keith's over there. I'm actually Jared Griffith. So, and I'm here to talk to you guys about evolving as a WLAN professional. What that really means, um, it's different for each person. Uh, I'm going to take you guys along uh, on a path of things that I've done on my journey, things that I've seen that have worked for other people. Um, I have a different uh, perspective on a lot of it. I've been a partner for a manufacturer. I've owned my own companies, done all those type of things and now I work for one. So I've seen both sides of the fence, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and uh, I'll give you my opinions along the way. So a little bit of housekeeping uh, that we gotta run through right now, just because we have uh, Gregor in the room. No heckling or hard questions, because this is Sparta, so. <laughs> The other thing is uh, a lot of people actually, in the last couple of weeks on Twitter, they heard Ruckus Wireless or someone from Ruckus Wireless was coming and there was a lot of buzz. People got excited. We had big dogs going on at the time. So this is what you were hoping for. You had, you know, Victor, Bill, Selena, GT, Marcus, and David Kalish. Sorry to disappoint you guys. This is what you got. <laughs> so... About me, um, I'm Jared Griffith. I'm uh, ADD like none other. Um, shiny metal objects, squirrels, and we will lose this conversation very, very quickly and be talking about something that has nothing to do with your or my evolution as a WLAN professional. Try to keep me on track. Uh, I'm CWNE number 117. Um, what does that mean? Um, spent a lot of time reading books playing in a lab, uh, trying to grow myself, my own credentials. And you can get a hold of me at Synergy Wi-Fi on Twitter. Uh, I am an Air Force veteran. Um, kind of a funny story. When I was in high school, um, I did two sports. I rode Saddle Bronx, and I wrestled. And I remember my dad, he's always been in technology, and he came to me and he wanted to teach me how to use a computer. I said, Dad, I will never, ever, ever use a computer in whatever I do. Yeah, I eat a lot of crow or that whole thing, but uh, I didn't know it, but back when I was in the Air Force at 17 years old, uh, I'd start doing RF type stuff. And this is a picture of an omnidirectional FM antenna that we made out of sticks, cable, and plastic spoons for isolators. And it actually worked, kind of. Nothing ever works when you're in the military, just so you know. Um, I do work for Ruckus Wireless. Um, I'm what they call a global consulting engineer for them. Um, I live out of Salt Lake. That's where I send my money. And uh, I pretty much live in a plane or in a foreign country. Um, what I do is I work on a six-person team. We actually handle uh, sensitive... Um, or high touch, high profile opportunities on the pre cells, the integration of them, if it's into their mobile packet core, um, or just a large enterprise network, and any post uh, installation stuff that, that comes along. Um, have a great, great boss. His name's uh, Michael Joyce, and have a great team. In the evolution of my career, these team members meant a lot in taking it to the next level. Whoops. I love to hunt. Um, at Ruckus, we're all about dogs over there. If I was to pick a dog, I would be a hunting dog at Ruckus. So, um, give you a little history. Um, showed you guys that um, I was in the military. I was in the military for four years. I was the dumb guy that made smart bombs smart. Um, I'd actually hold the uh, laser of the IR onto the target and then talk the pilot's eyes onto it. So um, for four years, my job was to do nothing 
more than put bombs on target. At the end of the day, that's uh, all we did is we blew stuff up and it was pretty freaking cool. So um, it was a lot of fun. After that, got out of the uh, military, did some other things, and worked my way into starting a direct TV uh, dealership and uh, having a bunch of installers and stuff. And went all across uh, these northwest states in, in America and uh, installed direct TVs. And uh, because I'd grown up cabling, um, because my dad um, did a lot of cabling at the university, I could actually run the phone line and tap in at their DMARC into the, where the satellite receiver was. So I made like 40 extra bucks. So that stair-stepped me into telecom, into my next uh, part of my career. And I became a PBX technician. And then I stood in the parking lot one day, and I saw these sales guys pull up, these nice new cars. At the time, I had little kids. And I was like, whoa. I looked at my car. I looked at their car. And I'm like, I'm in the wrong career field. So I got into sales. Of telecommunication stuff. After about a year and a half of doing that, I thought, man, this stuff's pretty easy. So I went out and started my own company selling telecommunication stuff. And we ran that company for about seven years, and then we sold it. Took about six months off, realized that wasn't going to work, and uh, went to work for another wire wireless manufacturer. Um, it was the first time I'd gotten into wireless, and I worked there for about a year and a half, realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do, and started my own wireless company, because I'd kind of figured that part out. And then what happened along the way is I realized I knew nothing about wireless, even though I was selling wireless. I was talking to these customers, explaining to them how great wireless was and all this stuff. And then I ran into a project, and this project's actually what jump-started my knowledge path and career. And uh, so we'll get to that part in just a minute. A lot of people uh, um, know a lot about themselves. And so uh, I got asked one time, what is one word that defines who I am? And I had to give a, a presentation on this. I am tenacious. Um, I'm a guy that won't give up, won't give in. And it's actually been really helpful as I've gone along in my career in learning all the knowledge, all those type of things. And I want to give a shout out to Keith, who's uh, here right now. And uh, he is uh, one of the big reasons why I'm where I'm at today. He's a great mentor, but there's been a whole lot of other people that have helped me out along the way. And uh, here's just a few names of them and what they brought to the table. Um, the last one, Prashant Ranade. You will never see him at one of these events. You'll probably never see him on Twitter, Facebook, anything. But he works at Ruckus. He's been there for nine years. And the guy is just amazing. Um, he can do anything, as far as I've ever seen. Um, there's been nothing that he couldn't do. And he uh, started out in the IT department. He and my current boss ran support for many, many years. And then they started this. Um, Black Ops team that we're on now for about the last four years. And this guy's got mad skills in about every arena. And he's taught me a lot, not about wireless, but about the whole kit and caboodle. You know, there's a lot, lot more that goes on than just Wi-Fi. There's that whole, you know, 2DS, that whole DS part. Um, he understands that great. So beginning your WLAN career, um, does not matter where you come from at all. Give us your wickedly smart. We will accept you into this community. So um, it, cool thing about wireless is anyone can stop what they're doing right now, pick up a book, start reading, start learning, and move forward on a career that you never knew existed today. How do you get started or get jump started? Um, how I got started is through working for a manufacturer and then going out on my own, figuring out I was really stupid and that I needed to learn something. And I went to Twitter and uh, found a mentor. And uh, luckily, luckily enough, I was able to find Keith. And he was a great mentor for me. And uh, I called him up one day. And I'm like, hey, could I take you out to lunch and ask you a few questions? And that was, what, four and a half, five years ago? It's worked out really well for me. Probably not so great for him. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Twitter. Um, it could go either way. Um, getting on Twitter and into the community that we have, take it with a grain of salt because um, there's a few trolls out there that like to give their information also. But you can weed them out usually pretty quick. There is a lot of smart people on Twitter that do blog, that do talk correct. Um, so it, it's a good place to be. Buy a CWNA book. There's like no way around it. And in my opinion, it's the most important book you are going to get out of the CWNP program because it's either going to say, yes, I have a basic fundamental foundation and know what I'm doing now, or it means I'm going to sit there and look that book on my shelf for years and probably do something else in life. And you got to build a lab. You need to buy a book. You need to build a lab. You need to get that book and build the lab. Get the book, build a lab. <laughs> okay? I mean, I can't stress this out enough. Um, those are things that helped me big time. So as you move up into your progression, um, you have what's known as the tricky years. You get new skills, you get new a new language, and the vernacular of how you talk to other WLAN professionals. Um, what's the favorite thing? Uh, WAPs, um, wireless access points. Um, yeah, that's their access points. Um, you can drop the W. And you can do other things too. Um, you know, you're to the point where you're ready to start drawing stuff and you have a stick. Well, now you can start surveying, designing, get tools, like doing a survey with an AP on a stick. And then you learn that one AP on a stick is not going to give you everything that you want to know, so then you need multiple. And then pretty soon, you get tired of lugging around a bunch of tripods and batteries, and you learn how to do predictive designs. So biggest invest, investment that you can do into yourself is buy your own tools. Um, there's a freedom that comes with having your own tools. If you don't like who you work for or what you do today, you can take your tools, you can move away, and do something else tomorrow. The other thing is, is you can sit and you can study with those tools. You can become proficient with them. You can get to the point to where you can go out to a customer and you can explain to them why their network's not working and design it properly and validate it instead of walking around going, we're going to put an AP over here. My spidey senses tell me that that's where it needs to go. I've actually heard people say that term before. And I was like, wow, that's cool. I wish I had those senses. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Gregor. Just kidding. Uh, Gregor was a big help because at the time we were both getting our CWNE. We were doing a project kind of together, kind of not. We were talking to the same company, but uh, he was a big motivator because he's such a really, really smart guy. So it was good to see him have success and try to keep up, and he ended up blowing me away in the end. So kudos to Gregor. But there will be a round two one day. And certifications and knowledge growth. You need to get certifications, not for the certification so that you can have alphabet soup after your name. It's for the knowledge that you get from it and the fact that it's, a, it's like in all processes. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if you start something, you need, you need to see it through and you need to finish it up. And career and job growth. What happens is when you get to a certain point with your skill set, you can actually take a step up and uh, work for different companies, uh, grow your position. And this is where I um, got rid of my other business and um, went to work for a manufacturer when I was at this point in my career as an SE. And you get to uh, work with a lot of wireless customers. You get to work with a lot of different opportunities, see different things. And uh, it's, it's actually a really, really good time um, in your life to sit down and get more certifications based upon the equipment that you're using for the manufacturer, but also just to grow and soft skills. That's a big one. Uh, sit down, talk with customers, sit, and, you know, figure out what they need to do in their design, what type of functions they need. And then start learning radius, security stuff, route switching. And a little story about radius is I was scared to death of it for a long time. 
didn't know how to do it. Everyone talked about radius servers and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't know how to do it. So I went to Google. And Google taught me how to do radius in about an hour. And then I got a Linux machine. And then I figured out how to, to make free radius on Linux. And it was all free. And at the time, when you're this point in your career, you're not wealthy by any means. So whatever you can do for free and learn from it, it's a good thing. And you can always go back to Google and figure out stuff. Work in your lab, um, especially as an SE. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves with SEs is when you give them marketing material, they eat it, they throw it up on the desk in front of you and walk out. That's not an SE to me. An SE should be the master of his domain on the equipment that he has. If you represent a manufacturer or your own company, it doesn't really matter. If you're selling it in front of a customer, you should actually know every component of it, how it works, why it works, where it's placed at. And to me, that's, a, that's just a given. Go back to Google and work in your lab. There's a honeymoon time in your career. You start to get certifications and you now have an abacus, so you're smart enough to count, and you can move forward. You've got, uh, you've got this great dialect with your customers, and uh, it, this is kind of a hard time, because it's really easy to kind of sit on your laurels. Uh, you're comfortable in your position at work. You've excelled there. Um, you don't spend as much time in the lab as what you probably should. But um, you got to keep going forward. Don't get comfortable. You got to keep learning because this industry can leave you behind pretty quickly. Um, it only takes a few months of sitting on the sidelines, and all of a sudden you realize you have a trick knee and a trick medulla, and you're not really going to compete with the rest of the people out there. So you got to keep getting that knowledge and those certifications. Gregor today said um, when we were talking about you know, validating wireless designs. He's gone out and validated and fixed some of his old designs. Um, I've done the same thing. And so I'm going to tell you this great story. Um, we're all supposed to stand up here and tell you how smart we are. But what we forget to tell you is at one point we were really stupid um, because there's pride that's involved with all of that. I had a customer that was doing an outdoor deployment. And it's when I own my own company. and. Uh, they wanted to do outside in in a, a MDU, a multi-dwelling unit. And uh, so we were going to put all these APs outside. We were going to mesh the back hall. Then we were going to shoot the 2-4 through the building. Everyone was going to connect. I was going to collect a big paycheck and ride off into the sunset. So we got the mesh up and working. APs were up high. Mesh was beautiful. Rocking back hall. We had this big old fat pipe to the internet. I mean, it was screaming. And then the 2.4 didn't work. We're like, hmm. OK, so we put all these adapters into people's homes and stuff like that all in the 2.4 and still didn't work. Got a little bit better, but they still weren't happy. So we thought, oh, the problem is 1, 6, and 11. So we replaced all the little 2.4 adapters with 5 gig adapters. And all of a sudden, it worked a little bit better, but they still weren't happy. So we started learning the hard way because it was costing me money. When you own your own business, the truck rolls one time, you make money. The truck rolls two times through infinity, you don't make money two through infinity. You actually spend money. A lot of people don't get that. Um, so called in some people. And this actually where I met Keith. Um, I used the ploy to, hey, let's go out to lunch, have a little chat. I have some questions for you. Um, a lunch or two later, he was out on site with me. and. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, first of all, all the APs are up in the air. They have great ears. They can listen from far away. We've got to bring them down. We've got to get channel reuse. Um, we have no channel reuse where they are at right now. But that ruins my coverage math. You know, I had these APs up high. I had all this coverage. We moved them down. Now I've got all these buildings attenuating my signal. I've got to add APs. That's going to cost me more money. So get more APs. Put more APs up. Um, get more channel reuse, had to add more mesh backlinks because now all the APs were lower, hidden behind buildings and stuff like that. The mesh wasn't working out quite as you know how, how we wanted it to be because it wasn't line of sight. So then we had bridges and run cables to APs and all these type of things. Got it to a point where it was fairly usable, and it cost me only about 30 grand. 
And that's not including man hours. That's just hard cost equipment. What it did get me, though, was knowledge. A, I'll never do another MDU again in this lifetime. Um, and uh, it also um, pulled out the fact that when Keith showed up, he had something I didn't have. And it wasn't just the knowledge, it was tools. He pulled out tools. And he was able to explain to me why stuff wasn't working. He was able to show me why stuff wasn't working. And it piqued an interest in me that I hated being stupid. And here's a guy sitting next to me with all this stuff and all this knowledge, and he's able to start fixing problems that I didn't even understand why I had a problem to begin with in the first place. Why? Because I read a marketing document that said, this is how you do it. So this is how I did it. And unfortunately, it didn't turn out very good via the marketing document, but the hard work and the knowledge document side of it worked out. You got to grow your lab and other technologies. We talked about Radius a while ago, but it's always good to pull um, your, your competitor's equipment into your lab, not so that you have the latest and greatest about them, just so you grow your knowledge base, because not everybody does the same thing. We don't all call it the same thing. But um, you can learn a lot from what other people do. Um, you know, simple things like how people integrate with Active Directory. Is it, is it secure? Is it non-secure? What ports they use? Um, how firewalls work? All those type of things. And how people use that type of, of equipment and information to go to sell to customers. And so it's just really nice to have that knowledge. Bring stuff in get a f foundational you know, um, knowledge of how it works, and then, and then grow. So I'm the world's worst blogger. I refuse to blog. I hate blogging. Uh, I'll speak, but um, yes. So there's a story behind those three posts. Um, at one time, I said, I want to go to work for Ruckus. They're like, you're one of our top partners. We'll never hire you. I said, I'll blog for Arrowhive. And they're like, yeah, whatever. I blogged for Arrowhive. Two posts, had a job a week later. So <laughs> it got me exactly what I wanted. It was, actually, it was actually pretty funny. But be respectful. Um, so um, that's the big thing. When you're up here, no one needs to do vendor on vendor bashing. We do it all pretty good in-house ourselves. And... Uh, and everyone does it. But it, what's really cool is in this industry, you can have a lot of vendors and stuff like that, but you can have a whole lot more friends than you can vendors. And it's great to come to these uh, events and see people like Gregor and Sean and Keith and all these other people. It doesn't matter who you work for. We're all in the same community. We're all after that, that knowledge, that compan companionship, you know, the uh, brotherhood, sisterhood you know, whatever it is, but just be respectful. And then we get to the point in our career where we kind of head down the road and you're the master of your own domain. And uh, you should be really proficient in what you do in the field, just in your position, whether it's, you know, uh, end user interface, whether it's uh, integrating into a, a big mobile packet core or climbing towers and doing point to points and all of these things, you need to be the best that you can at it. You need to have figured out how to install it, um, what all the tricks are along the way to make yourself more proficient. Um, I mean, I, I, I truly believe in always trying to make yourself better, especially if you're in the field. Um, it's, it's always nice to walk into a customer that's got a huge problem and you've seen that problem before. Um, because you've dealt with it. Um, I, I travel a lot, like, I don't know, between two and 300,000 miles a year, and I work with a lot of end users, and I work on really big, big, cool projects, and I work on these little rinky-dink problems that have just someone so fired up and ready to, like, scream. It's not even funny. But it's great to be able to walk in and say, I have the knowledge. Um, just chill. Just relax, man. Let's talk through it. You, investigate what the problem is, find a resolution, and get it solved. And uh, cross-training, branching out. Um, so when I went to work at Ruckus, I became an SE, and then I moved over to this position um, about a year and a half into it. 
Um, the cool thing about cross training is um, if you're a Wi Fi guy, every single day, then you're really good at Wi Fi, but there's all these other components. So as you branch out in your career, you start to understand what subnets are, what routing tables are, OSPF, e EGRRP, all those kind of different things. All of a sudden, your knowledge expands. When your knowledge expands, what you can do expands also. You can build bigger and better networks, all these type of things. And it's just really fun to get that knowledge. But the hard thing for me is to start mentoring and give back um, because I'm not a blogger and all of those things and more of just usually a, a smart A when it comes to giving people tweets on Twitter and stuff like that. So um, I, I, I try to do what I can the way I can. And it's, it's actually really hard, um, especially like training. I mean, there's a lot of trainers in here, and that's like a gift to be able to sit down and teach someone. Because I'm like, really? Well, here's a book. It's all in the book. I read the book. It was there. I mean, I promise, you know. But to sit down and actually communicate that with people, it's, it's really, really hard. But it's, it's necessary in this community to find a way to give back however you can, um, whether it's sitting telling you about what a stupid career choice that you made and all these things along the way so that you'll never go out and do an MDU, you know? Because um, they suck. <laughs> keep proficient. Um, keep working. <coughs> Um, you're never at the summit unless you're this guy. This is Bill Kish, uh, one of the co-founders of Ruckus, standing on top of some mountain somewhere in the world that he just climbed. And uh, wh what I mean by that is, um, unless you're this guy, because uh, I have a lot of respect for him, but mainly because he's standing on the top of the mountain, there is nowhere to go um, from this point, from this picture, except down. But you don't have to go down the same path that you came up. So you can actually choose a different path and actually learn more in your career, even once you've reached the summit. So the whole learning, training, um, understanding what you're going to do in your career keeps going. You just go about it a different way. Thank you, and have a great conference. And that was really fast. <laughs> so. um, before I open it up for questions, um, I just wanted to uh, go back and, and visit something. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> so, thanks again, guys. Sure. <laughs>Actually, it's quite an easy question. Uh, you were mentioning the first vendor where you were working. Was it Trapeze? Or was it? No. Zerus. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was uh, actually Zerus where I got my first uh, s um, taste of the Wi Fi marketplace. Okay. So. That's the end of my question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. What's the, how did you get into your lab? What's in a home lab? Oh, what's in a home lab? Everything I drug out of your lab in the beginning. Um, let's see, I have firewalls, I have Cisco switches. Um, even though we're not on the magic quadrant because we don't have switches, I have ruckus switches in there that we EOL, EOL'd a while ago. Um, I've got some Cisco gear, I have some Arrowhive gear, um, I got servers, uh, a lot of virtualization, um, that, that's where everything's going, virtualize this, virtualize that, um, oh, commit to it, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing, eBay, go shopping on eBay, buy APs, Big on Twitter. I have a friend that's like really good at that. I mean, that guy hasn't bought a piece of equipment yet, and he's got a phenomenal lab. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's just a bunch of different ways to go about it, but I mean, you just got to commit to yourself that you want to go forward and and uh, be committed to what you're going to do, and and set up your lab. But it's not just setting it up; it's spending the hours in there, actually learning about management frames, data frames. Um, security, all that kind of stuff. It was funny, I was, I was making a joke um, last night, I can't remember who I was talking to, 
But I, I, I said, I still remember the first time I heard a nonce. I thought, what the heck is an a nonce, you know? And uh, in the four-way handshake, and I'm like, well, oh, you know, it, you can just kind of see the progression of your path. And I, I remember seeing it in the lab, not knowing that it was called an a nonce, you know? And uh, so, it, I mean, being in a lab um, will do wonders for you, so. How long did your process take? Uh, th <laughs> Towards C from starting to CWNE? Uh, um, about three years and a whole lot of failed tests along the way. I'm the world's worst test taker. Um, if they would have asked me the question, I probably could have passed a lot easier, but uh, I'm not a multiple choice guy. Like, C, 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 C. <laughs> you know, work for Ferris Bueller. But. Primos? Uh, so, what would be maybe the five tools a wireless LAN professional should always kind of go to bed with? Um, first of all, your wits. Um, common sense was probably the first one. Then UC is going to be mad, and so is the uh, Metagate guys. But Spectrum XT, Survey Pro, either ESS or Air Magnet, Wi-Fi Analyzer Pro, MacBook, and just the uh, commitment to get up and kick butt. I mean, that's pretty much uh, what I've done for like four years. And read a CWNP book as you go to sleep. So, I mean, those are my things that get me up and going every day. So, any other super simple questions that I can answer and look really smart doing? Can I take it off now? <laughs>